Okay, pet parents, so you guys want to talk about wobbler syndrome, huh? Well, let's get into it. Ask them the age-old question, Biscotti. <laughs> Simply put, wobbler syndrome is what happens to you on Taco Tuesday when you have one too many margaritas, thinking those four baskets of chips and salsa you housed are going to prevent that hangover, and it actually doesn't. You guys take care. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. So the animal version of Wobbler syndrome is a neurological slash spinal condition that affects Doberman pinchers and giant breed dogs like your Great Danes, your Mastiffs, your Burners, your Old English Sheepdogs, you get the picture. There's two scientific names you may hear Wobblers refer to as, the first one being cervical spondylomyelopathy and the second one being cervical vertebral instability. Now if we take that second one and break all of these words down, cervical means your neck. Vertebral is referring to the vertebrae or the bony portions of the spine and instability means not stable. So we can assume based on this that there's going to be something happening in the neck that's going to lead to spinal instability. When we get down to the nitty gritty, Wobbler syndrome can more or less be any combination of several different things that lead to that instability with the first one of those things being something called stenosis of the cervical vertebral canal. So in every vertebrae there's something called a vertebral canal which is basically just this tube that the spinal cord itself goes through. Now stenosis means narrowing so what's happening with this first thing is that canal or the tube that the spinal cord has to go through is smaller in diameter than it naturally is and this leads to compression of the spinal cord and compression of the spinal cord is never a good thing. The second thing on the list of issues that can happen with Wobbler syndrome is what we call malformation of the cervical vertebrae. So more or less the bones aren't formed appropriately and they're not shaped right. Excessive tissue at the articular facet means there's an overgrowth of tissue at the joint where two bones meet and move. So when this happens in the spine it reduces mobility. The fourth issue is hypertrophy of the ligamentum flavum, flavum, tomato, tomato, however you want to say it. The purpose of that ligament is to provide extra stability and support to the spine. Now when the ligament hypertrophies, it gets very thick and that thickening prevents the spine from moving appropriately. And there's two forms of Wobbler syndrome. The first one is what we call osseous associated, where as the pet's developing, abnormal changes in the bone are what lead directly to the compression of the spinal cord. And the second form is what we call disc associated. And this one's very common in Doberman pincers, where the changes that happen to the spine lead to herniated discs that then lead to the compression of the spinal cord. Since what's happening in Wobbler syndrome is the spinal cord is being compressed, all of the clinical signs are going to be related to compression of the spinal cord. Because this is a neurological condition, true diagnosis is done with an MRI scan. We treat wobblers based on the severity of the clinical signs with more mild cases actually doing very well with supportive medications and activity restrictions. Now the more severe cases will require surgical intervention to go in and decompress the spine and stabilize it. And the surgery does vary a little bit depending on what we're seeing on the actual MRI scan of that particular pet.